Hello and welcome to the Worldly Bloke channel. The DJI Matrice M210. Oh dear, my worst fears seem to have come true, so excuse the I told you rant. With all the understandable worry and concern about the FAA's proposed new rules on electronic ID for drones and the upcoming EASA regulations that take effect for us in the UK in June, there's been some really interesting reports published by the Air Accident Investigation Branch, the AAIB, on investigations into DJI Matrice 210 crashes that have been apparently caused by technical problems. And if you take a look at the AAIB site this month, there's been eight reports of crashed M210s. Some of them caused by rain and some just motor or ESC failures. Now, most of these reports are from the emergency services, and I guess they are a little bit more exposed and accountable, but I'm sure there's been quite a few more that have gone unreported by pilots who are operating as single ops in the middle of nowhere, and they just quietly made insurance claims. It saves any embarrassment. So if you check out the links in the description, you can have a really good read of these. It's compelling stuff. Oddly, there's no reports based on the DJI TB55 battery firmware issues we had last year, even though they were grounded until the problem was fixed. Now, I've always had a problem with the M210, and I've always thought it was a totally awful drone. It's not just hearsay, but first-hand experience. See, last year, I was scheduled to do lots more Agritech surveys with a Micasense Red Edge multi-spec camera. And the previous year, I used my trusty old Inspire One Pro modified to carry the Red Edge. And because I figured it was end of line, I'd upgrade to an M210 RTK. And that means I could use it for the growing number of roof inspections and the 3D modeling work I was starting to get on a regular basis. I get longer flight times, I get more accurate positioning, reliability, and I can fly it when it's wet or raining. And the M210 is, after all, an enterprise offering from DJI, so it's expensive and it must be good. Don't believe it. So I ordered a brand new M210 RTK. And when it arrived, I checked it all over, fired it up, and after about five minutes of the first test flight, it just wandered off by itself. The GPS and the RTK had just gone a bit mental, which is scary stuff with about 15k's worth of drone in the air. So I just landed it, tried again, and it did exactly the same thing. So I just sent it back, got a replacement, and that replacement did more or less the same thing. It's utterly useless, and it left me not trusting its reliability. So I sent it back and just got a full refund. Plus, I discovered the RTK is only for positioning, which is fair enough, but the correction data doesn't even get saved in the image metadata, so it's totally useless for mapping purposes. And you can't even do simple orbits to capture images for a 3D model. You'd be much better off with a P4P Pro. Well, much better off, in fact. And when I took a close look at the motor and the ESC housings, there's no gaskets or sealing on the screws and the bolts. So it's hard to see how it could be IP43 rated. And anyway, flying in the rain is one thing, but how will the camera be sealed? Well, of course it's not. So last year, I decided on using my Inspire One most weeks for Agritech surveys. And it's been 100% reliable for four years. It's never missed a beat. It will fly in much higher winds than my Inspire 2, and although it doesn't have all the sensors and the fancy flight modes, and it's a little bit wobbly on the GPS, it's a totally solid workhorse. So, here's my point. I'm no DJI fanboy, but the Inspire, P4P Pro and Mavic are awesome drones that do the job. Roof inspections, surveys, 3D modelling, they're all easy and reliable and I can deliver what the client asks for and get my invoices paid. So why are the DJI Enterprise drones just so awful, mega expensive, and don't have useful functionality? It makes no sense to me. 
Also, regulations are regulations, and if you operate commercially, you have to comply. But common sense should prevail. I'd never fly when or where my stomach told me it didn't feel right, even if it was fine according to the regulations and the specs. And that includes flying in the rain. So eight accident reports of the same drone with very similar technical problems in the same month is surely a massive problem and points to the M210 being unfit for purpose, especially since it's the drone of choice for the emergency services. Now, I know the V2 M210 has recently appeared and that fixed the RTK correction data problem, but I'm just not going near it mainly because there's been so much noise on forums about the M210 killing people's aerial survey businesses just due to unreliability. And now these are appearing as official AAIB accident reports, I'm struggling to understand why the hugely expensive DJI Enterprise class of drone can justify its existence. Now, I don't subscribe to conspiracy theories, but... The timing of these reports is interesting given the upcoming EASA drone regulations for remote ID in the UK and the FAA proposals in the US. Now in the US these will effectively cripple the hobby but I'm convinced the main reason behind them is nothing to do with safety and accountability. Sure we need to be safe and sensible but that zero to 100 feet of airspace is unused at the moment and is ripe for commercial exploitation by the likes of Amazon and UPS for drone delivery. And they don't want us pesky hobbyists cluttering it all up and getting in the way. Personally, I don't think drone delivery will ever be a big thing. And once the investors realise they've been had, they'll pull out and it may just all go away. Now, since consumer drones have been available for, what, 10 years, there's been no fatal accidents. So introducing these new regs is moot, really. But if there's officially published accident reports like these involving drones, it certainly supports the proposals. So are we going to see FAA drone accident reports in the US over the next few months? I think we will. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found that useful, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if it's your first visit, then please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the bell to get notified when I post a new video. I'll see you next time.